In Mecklenburg, Judge Bledsoe pauses certain deadlines, and in Leon County, Judge Cooper gives his written order to stay. The ACC lawsuits are always in the news, so we're back on the big mountain to keep you updated. Hey, great to have you here back on the mountain. I am JY. This is my good friend Steve. Steve, it's a little bit. We were off this past weekend, so we're getting back at it right now. Some updates here for FSU and the ACC, and we just dropped another episode on Clemson. A lot going on with Clemson, so make sure you check that one out as well. Let's start in Mecklenburg first. So May 2nd, which was the end of last week, Judge Bledsoe issued an interim order that suspended certain deadlines. This coming after a hearing uh, where he considered whether or not uh, to stay discovery. That was kind of what he was uh, coming to to figure out. Um, So he said, yes, at this time, we are going to stay certain deadlines. uh, And this included um, suspending the filing uh, pleadings, conducting discovery right now, and engaging in the course management process. So the biggest one that we were waiting for discovery, is he gonna let it move forward or not? No, he says as of right now, uh, there's good cause to at least for now suspend discovery in Mecklenburg. This of course is waiting for the appeal process to kind of go through its, uh, you know, action and, and things like that. So that's the update in Mecklenburg in Leon County on May 6th. Judge Cooper, his written order denying the motion to stay came out, um, and that was from the April 9th hearing, the first of two that he had. He did rule from the bench there on April 9th in terms of denying the motion to stay. And there were some few, a few things here that stuck out to me. I, I did read it. We know what he said, but it also you can glean some more things off of the actual written motion. So let me go over four things here, and I want to get your take. The first one is one you have been talking about from the very beginning, and that is our wonderful uh, issue of sovereign immunity. This seems to, again, be a very sticky wicket for the judge. And you mentioned that when you were listening to most, if not all, of this hearing. Um, you know, you've pointed at that several times, and he specifically says he's kind of stuck on this whole express waiver for a a case outside or litigation outside the state of Florida. So he's using this potential uh, issue of needing an express waiver for uh, these these sovereign immunity cases outside of the state of Florida. I know we talked to Doug Rohan about that in terms of express versus implied. Um, So yeah, he, he put this in here again. You can definitely tell he's having some issue with sovereign immunity here, Steve. The second piece, material litigation, which was a big one that we heard from a lot of viewers and fans in terms of the Mecklenburg case and whether or not Judge Bledsoe there was going to have an issue with their first filing being material or not and how they, the ACC, defined materiality for uh, their bylaws. Um, Here, uh, Judge Cooper in Leon County, he did not find that the ACC had the authority to define or has the authority to define common words in a way that distorts their ordinary meaning. That being material here is what we're talking about. Also, the status quo involves important issues and that a vote was likely required to file the first action. So if you remember the ACC saying our first action was just maintaining the status quo there was no materiality to it uh we were just making sure things things move forward as they always have judge cooper saying even maintaining the status quo any changes to that has can have a material impact so he definitely pushed back on that piece um the next one the third item anticipatory suit and he talked about this quite a bit too in in his hearing Um, he states that anticipatory suits have been condemned for decades he finds equitable considerations from patent law and we talked about that on that episode he went over a lot of different issues with patent law while the acc may have had an obligation to file suit they should have done so long before learning of the impending action in Florida. So again, the ACC laid out, this was a long time coming. We knew this was happening, but, but, and, and the judge here is saying, Cooper's like, if you knew it was coming, why did you wait until the day before? Well, they waited until the day before because they wanted priority. We all know that's why they did it, and he's basically calling them out for that. Yep. The fourth item here is the subject matter in this case 
um, is actually property of the state of Florida. Again, another big item we got out of that uh, hearing. Eight, the ACC claim of ownership on FSU's media rights to its home games post-exit from the conference would involve the taking of property owned by the state of Florida. So I know those were the big items that we kind of took out of the hearing and heard. Those were also the items I took out of um, his written order here. But he, he added, you know, his his flavor, his exactly how he wanted to say it per se in the written order. Um, he states that he does not find the issues in this case are of local concern to North Carolina, but rather they are relevant to the states where the ACC has institutions. So before I get to his conclusion there, anything on those four items, Steve, I know a couple of them we've been talking about for quite a while. Yeah, so I, I have I have a, a couple thoughts on those four items and then also just a thought on, you know, comparing the two cases. Okay. Uh, so first of all, yeah, sovereign immunity, obviously this has been big for Judge Cooper. It's very interesting how, uh, I, I think, watching the two um, cases in the different areas with yep. different courts, uh, different judges, um, how they not only interpret sovereign immunity, but um, the importance they seem to give it. Mm. In Judge Bledsoe's court in North Carolina, you know, it, it's very clear, you know, he looks at this as a kind of routine contract right. law matter. Um, whereas Judge Cooper is really fixated on the sovereign immunity. Um, and I, th I think in the verbiage that he used in, in the, the hearing before was an explicit explicit waiver versus an implicit waiver. Right. Where I think Judge, if I remember correctly, Judge Bledsoe said, ruled basically that it was an implicit waiver of sovereign immunity because they when they joined the ACC, they implicitly waived their sovereign immunity because right. they're participating in a an organization, nonprofit organization in the state of that's headquartered in the state of North Carolina. Whereas Judge Cooper seems to be really focused on, well, they're they're they, you know they're a state entity, and in the state of Florida, um, you have to explicitly waive your your sovereign immunity yeah. when you're dealing with courts or entities outside the state. Right. So that's kind of interesting, just comparing those. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other parts just just seem routine, don't yeah. don't didn't really surprise me. Um, but getting back to that property of state of Florida again, yeah. this seems like something that he's really focused on. Um, he focused on takings, uh, like the, the you know the aspect of taking property from the state of Florida, and to me those two issues that sovereign again in, in North Carolina I think it's it, it's looked at in Judge Bledsoe's court a business court as this is a simple contract. Right. How's the contract written? That's how we're going to enforce it. Right. Whereas Judge Cooper really seems to be focusing on these larger issues, the kind of state versus state um, issues. Um, the sovereign immunity piece, the property of the state of Florida, taking of that property. Yeah. So it's really interesting kind of to compare those, um, you know, the, the cases going on. And then what I'll just say is kind of a funny part to me. You know, we've been talking about this race, okay? Mm. You know, which, which courthouse will get there faster? We got one judge who's pausing everything, you know, for while appeals are going on. Apparently the judges didn't get the memo that we want them to race and get them to the end. Right. Because Judge Wetzel is pausing things now for a potential appeal. And uh, Judge Cooper's been trying to pause things and put things on hold for mediation. So hopefully they can get through mediation and come to a settlement. Right. Uh, so I don't, I don't know that the judges are on board with that whole race to get to a... Uh, like like we have been. I think they're in a race to get to a settlement. That's what the that's, judges are. Yeah, so, right? Yeah, so, right. Um, and they've, he, he extended also, I think we talked about it in our last episode, he extended the time for them to agree, he being Judge Cooper, extended the time for the ACC and FSU to agree on a mediator. Hell, yes. we can't even get to the table because we can't agree, agree on, on who's mediator. coming to the table yes, for right yes. now. So he gave him extra time on that for Pete's sake. Um, but yeah, good, good points, good points. I, and I know, kind of uh, repeating some of what we heard in the hearing, or a lot of what we heard in the hearing, but again, uh, seeing it down in this order, I, th I think, uh, is worth repeating some of these kind of, these high, high level, what we feel are the most important pieces out of the stay. So remember, this was just the first hearing on the stay. He'll have another written order on the dismissal, which he did approve the dismissal right. for now, uh, and we'll see how that goes. Just to wrap this one up, he concludes here that the ACC appears to be the natural plaintiff, and absent a true waiver of sovereign immunity, is susceptible to suit only in Leon County. He states there is substantial risk to the reversal on appeal in the North Carolina proceedings. 
So he's he's almost I'm not saying he's attacking Judge Bledsoe, but he's saying a yeah Bledsoe. I know you said the ACC is the plaintiff. Well, I say the uh, FSU is the plaintiff here, and absent a waiver of sovereign immunity, which he's clearly saying he thinks. Now he hasn't ruled on that piece, but he thinks there needed to be an uh, exclusive and express uh, waiver of that. So he's saying without that. They're susceptible only to suit in Leon County, again, according to Judge Cooper. Um, and he almost is throwing a little bit of shade. That might be a little heavy. But on to Bledsoe saying, there's a risk of this reversing on appeal in North Carolina. I'm, I'm sure Bledsoe completely disagrees with that because, they're, they're again, as I have said before, they're defining this and kind of ruling on two different things. They're ruling on the, the different cases, and they are different cases, in two different states. So it's not apples to apples. Yes, it's the same uh, plaintiff on one side, defendant, and plaintiff on one side, defendant, and they're kind of pissing about the same thing, but but they're not, uh, the wars are not necessarily on the same fronts in, in, in these states right now. Yep. So, all right, well, that's where we're at with this. Uh, we'll see what happens here. It looks like Mecklenburg's probably going to be kind of uh, slow moving here for a little bit. I'm sure we're going to get the written order uh, from Cooper on the dismissal here. And, of course, as we know, he's trying to get him to mediation. So we'll see what happens with that. Stay with us here on the Big Mountain. We are going to see this till the very, very end, whether that's six months or, hell, six years. I have no idea what it's going to take to get this sucker done. I know FSU fans probably shudder and they'll say, J.Y., it's never going to take six years. But we really have absolutely no idea how long it'll take. So make sure you give this one a like. Subscribe if you like our content. We'll see you guys next time on the Big Mountain.